perspective with me, Adam Simbe. Recently, the National Council for Technical Education, NACTE, deregistered five technical colleges in Dar es Salaam, 41 colleges operating without proper registration, 52 colleges did not comply with the accreditation requirement, and about 112 colleges with the required <coughs> registration. This was a serious step in the whole process of reviewing our education system and requirements. What implication does this uh, move mean to students and would-be students of these national institutions? To, 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 to discuss this topic today with me are uh, Professor Ketila Mkumbo, who is a board member of NACTE, uh, Engineer Zebadaya, Mo Zebadaya Moshi, who till recently Director General of VETA. Mwaribu, Charles Philemon Mabonda, former director of secondary education, the Minister of Education, retired teacher, he says. Last but not least, Professor Tole Mweke, again, until a couple of years back, Vice Chancellor of Open University of Tanzania. Now, there are two engineers here, ladies and gentlemen, the professor and um, and uh, Moshi, uh, two educationists, uh, Professor Mkumbo and, uh, and uh, Malimu Mabonda, but they are all educationists. Welcome again to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, let's start with you, Professor Mkumbo, uh, because you're a board member of NACTE. What are the implications of the registering? The colleges to the current and past students and those that would have wished to register for studies in these tertiary institutions. There must be some implications. Either from the NACTE itself to the student and the, the broader education system yeah. as far as we're concerned. So thank you very much for having me in this program once again. Uh, this time as a member of a teaching and facilitation body for the NACTE, which takes care of the teacher education uh, institutions in this country, tertiary ones. So f first of all, we should uh, remind your viewers that the, the core function of NACTE, uh, the National Council for Technical Education, is actually to regulate and coordinate all matters pertaining to technical education and training in this country, uh, specifically, particularly on uh, quality assurance and enforcement. So it is this body that is mandated by the government on behalf of this country, uh, the people of this country, to ensure that these technical institutions are, they, they are, are compi complying with the law and they are running the institutions in accordance with the standards that have been set by, by NACTE. So this process that we are discussing today is core and part of NACTE mandate. In terms of the implications, obviously there are implications. First of all, it is sending signals to the public that, hey, your institutions, your technical institutions, there is somebody who's taking care of them. And that, you know, can, you can't just wake up in the morning and begin a college. As much as we want the majority of our young people to have access to different education institutions, including technical education, but we have to ensure also that our young people attending these institutions are receiving the quality education that we expect at all the levels. So, so this is very important because these technical institutions, they're producing people who go to become entrepreneurs. These are the people who are going to man our technical institutions. These are the people who are going to, you know, now we are talking about industrialization. These are the people who will be going to, to work there. So if we produce substandard, sub-qualified people, you know, it will be disaster for the country. So, so that is one implication, that sending a very good signal that, hey, here there is somebody who is taking care of the quality of these institutions. Of course, the students, it is very unfortunate that, uh, because the students are innocent, they do not go there on their, just on their wish, they applied, uh, they were told that you have qualified. Uh, so what happens is that NACTA does not condemn the students. The students are innocent. This is 100% the obligation of these colleges. 
And in this kind of eventuality, what happens is that the, these colleges, they bear the consequences of these students. So they are supposed to, what NACS does is to coordinate relocation of these students, but the costs and all the movements mm. will have to be done by these colleges. So, so that is in their registration, that is in the law. So the students, they have, a, of course, they have this inconvenience, they are being inconvenienced, they have this, this disturbance, but of course, in terms of cost, uh, in terms of qualifications, mm -hmm. NACT takes care of them. Only those that who happen to be, to have been registered without qualification, that one yes. then becomes a problem. But, you know, they will have to pack it, go home, mm -hmm. and do something else. But otherwise, all qualified students will be redistributed to other colleges on the cost of these co colleges that have been deregistered. Two, two follow-up questions before I ask yeah. Professor Mboita to come yeah. in here. When did you last do this kind of exercise as NACTE? Oh, so, so this is actually a regular. I sit on the board, and every time I sit on the board, we approve some of the colleges which have been deregistered. Some of them have been given warning. So it is a, a regular exercise. It started mainly, I think, 2013, and this happens every year. What has changed this year is the number. The number is bigger. And the number is bigger because from this year, NACTA is also <laughs> operating from the zonal level. Mm -hmm. So now the scrutiny is closer because now previously it was being done central from Dar es Salaam. And you know this is a very big country. But now we have zones, different regions. So it means that we have people very close to these colleges. So they're capable of now monitoring these colleges closely. So even those colleges that you are saying here, in the afternoon there will be colleges, in the, in, in the, during the night there will be bars. <laughs> now there is a chance of our people seeing them much more closely. So from this year onward, mm. you know, it, the chances of having bogus colleges are going to decrease. Yes. Yeah. Well, this year because it, it was uh, published, published, publicized yeah. in the media, that's yeah. why. Because probably in the, in the previous years, as you said, you started in 2013. Yeah. You did it quietly. You didn't come out in the open and. They would release the. They would give out the press release, but this time around, I remember one of the, one of the big English newspapers. Actually, yes. that was the, the headline. Yes. And of course, a couple of other newspapers. So it is the media. Actually, the so major ones. The major. Yeah. Came up with the story. Exactly. So it is actually <coughs> the media. Sometimes they don't pay attention, but this time they pay attention because I think because of the big number that was involved. Oh, okay. I would think so. Professor Mbwete. Yes. Um, what do you say to this? <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think Professor Nkumbo has addressed the broader issues that uh, are related to this uh, action. But my, my uh, main uh, point of view would be that for the first time uh, we are seeing very clearly the importance of having a, a good, uh, quite assurance framework at national level. And I'm looking at this uh, issue that are observed after decisions of NACSE. I don't look them at them in isolation. Mm. I look at them in a holistic manner. I'm linking them with the measures that were recently taken by TCU on a number of universities that also led to transfer of students to other universities. Yeah. So for me, first of all, there is now a much more enhanced requirement by the citizens. They are demanding accountability of the institution. Therefore, the, the importance of quite assurance uh, by all higher education institutions, and I would say educational institutions is increasing now. So we're going to, to get more scrutiny from the general society. Secondly, I'm also looking at this as a broader issue whereby I think there is a crisis in the education sector. We have now seen two. I, you know, let's, let's give some more time. There will be a few other sectors coming. Uh, I guess maybe VETA will also be coming very soon. <laughs> and later on, we'll end up with the secondary schools and primary schools. Before we realize that it is time for Tanzania, perhaps the president has to now form another national commission, following on the commission that was handled by the Makweta. late Makweta 34 years ago. Kenya has done three reviews in the meantime, the latest last year. Tanzania has done <coughs> not a single review of the entire education sector. So I'm looking at the society waking up on quite assurance, but also Tanzania has been sleeping over its education system. And I'm very glad that last week, I think, a number of donors uh, did tell the government 
to really look at the entire education system before it collapses. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think the, these, these are very symptomatic of a much bigger problem that is there in the education sector. And, and my view here is that uh, it is critical that this process must involve the stakeholders. I'm you seeing the process of, the process of, of reviewing this uh, education so sector education. during the course of forming the commission yes. uh, and actions to be taken on quite a short framework. The government must involve the stakeholders. I'm seeing some indications that uh, lately the stakeholders are not uh, much involved in contributing ideas to this. So even during the course of formation of uh, such a commission, the president has to consult the different key stakeholders in this country, including the private sector, during the course of formation of such a commission. And, and I think uh, it is important that uh, we work on this uh, very soon. I have been saying uh, the importance of this issue maybe every time I come to TBC programs, in different programs, I've been yeah. stressing yeah. the importance of Tanzania, uh, the president of Tanzania, setting a, a new national commission to review the entire education sector. But how, how do you link the steps that were taken by NACTI uh, directly to the education system? I talked about uh, the steps taken by NACTI being step number two. The steps were taken by TCU recently mm -hmm. and the Minister That's of Education, the Tanzania, um, uh, Commission for Universities, yeah. uh, working with the Minister of Education where was the initial step. But there will be many such, such steps that will be taken in the next few months. We should not wait until this is, happens in all the subsectors you, of education. Would you, would you therefore share the view that uh, quality assurance in our education system has not uh, leaves much to be desired? That's why I'm talking about the need to really look at the entire education sector, including the, the holistic quite assurance framework at all, all levels. I see this as a, as a very critical issue. And, and, and uh, let me give you a very simple example. If you just, just copy Tanzania and Kenya. We, Kenya was behind Tanzania in setting up very great not too late, maybe different of two years. But Kenya did something which I think we didn't realize the importance. In, Kenya. Apart from having a regulatory body, there is an independent inspectorate body that is inspecting the operations of this. Is, is it within the Ministry of Education? Or it is, the it is uh, uh, within the Ministry of Education, but it's outside. Very independent. The, yeah, mm -hmm. Independent from the regulatory organs. Mm -hmm. So they submit their report directly to the Ministry of Education. So Tanzania has uh, given a blind, very, very blind eye to this. We should have done it many years ago. In, in Kenya, the, 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 the commission that is for universities has an inspection committee that reports every year to the Minister of Education on, on issues that the regulatory organs have to take action on, including the institutions. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I talked about it as being a, a broader sector. Yeah. For, um, Professor Mwete, you were you are the founder member of TCU and at one time in the early stages, chairman of the TCU. Were these factors not uh, taken into account as you were establishing TCU, whatever name it was called uh, before it became TCU? Before TCU, we had the Higher Education Accreditation Council. Uh, at that time, maybe it was not foreseen. But uh, at the time of formation of the Tanzania Commission for Universities, I, re I recall that uh, before I was appointed chair, we had discussed the need to have uh, such a, an independent inspection program. But I think at that time, there wasn't much agreement on the part of the government on the need for it. But I guess sometimes we have to learn some lessons. That was despite the fact that there was already on, the, on the table. Yeah, there was, was discussion. The I, I recall there was a discussion, a discussion of that. Mm. And I recall when we had the first higher education forum in Arusha, we had discussed that issue. But unfortunately, the follow-up did not really uh, uh, go anywhere, because, largely because the minister maybe was not uh, yet convinced of the need for that. But uh, I think now we are learning the hard way right. that we should have had that. Uh, um, I, I turn to Engineer Moshi, mm. Director General of VETA. The and VETA is a household name. Yeah. Everybody knows about mm. this, and uh, it has done a lot of good work. Thank uh, you. Thank you. The issue which the, both professors have referred to. Mm. Uh, quality control, quality assurance, and all that. Mm. W what is your take on this? Uh, with your better background, I mean, you, 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 your institution, your former institution yes. was one of the 
greatest tertiary institutions, yeah. turning out a number of, uh, mm -hmm. absorbing a number mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. young fellows mm -hmm. you know, out of schools, mm -hmm. not necessarily failure, but who couldn't continue with the Form 6 mm -hmm. or up to university. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what is your take on this whole subject? You see, VETA is also a regulator of vocational education and training system. NACTE regulates the technical part, VETA regulates the vocational part, and we have TCU as a regulator for the university part. <coughs> Before I come to VETA, I would like to add on what Professor Mbemweke said. I, I've seen a lot of interventions uh, from the fourth government and the fifth government in trying to improve the education system. Yes. Uh, during the fourth government, uh, there were several interventions in, in as far as access is concerned, increasing the number of, 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 of primary schools and secondary schools through different programs. There was also an intervention on how to probably get more teachers. There was an intervention building laboratories all over the country. And currently, in the current government, we have seen the minister uh, fighting a lot on quality. Uh, these are interventions. And uh, uh, for me, I, I appreciate what is happening. But what Professor Mbwete said is we need to look at the education sector holistically. Uh, uh, look at the gaps in the system design a system that works well for Tanzania. And uh, from there, we can prioritize how we, we, we address the shortfalls in the system. Uh, so I take the interventions as an interim, but we really need uh, s uh, some experts to sit down, look at the system, evaluate the whole system, uh, air out the weaknesses and the strength of the system, come up with a system that will probably be more relevant to what the current environment we are operating in. This is my take, and as far as okay. Prof. Mbwete said. But with, with VETA, we, we, as you said, we, we did quite well and is still doing well. The issue of, uh, of quality was also a problem. We had a number of mushrooming uh, vocational Mushroom training centers. centers. Yeah, they were almost close to 900. <coughs> but in 19, in 2009 up to two, 2010, we decided to do what we call re-registration of, of centers. We set standards for vocational training centers. Uh, and the standards were based on the labor market requirements. And we decided to do, uh, to register the training, uh, the vocational training centers afresh. So it's like we, 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 we deleted the all the registration, registered, okay. and then we start a fresh registration. The, all, the same, the same centers. I mean, I yeah, this, all the centers, all the centers based on the new standards, okay. and uh, through that process, a number of uh, centers did not qualify for registration. And for those which qualified, we did what we call categorization of the centers. Uh, VETA offers level one, two, three, and uh, NACTE takes up from there, four, five, six, I think. Seven. Up to, up up to seven. Yeah. Seven. So the, the categorization activity uh, was designed to, to, to give a given center an autonomy to pro provide either level one or level two depending on its capacity. If you are categorized to provide uh, level one training, you, your limit is level one. Others could provide one and two, and the others could provide one, two, and three. What was the basic requirement to provide one and two? There were, there were criterias that uh, prevailed, and they're still prevailing. We look at the, uh, the training facilities that you have, because vocational is more of hands-on. We look at the quality of teachers you, you're having, which was critical. And uh, we also look at the 
at the 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 infrastructure that was critical you if you don't have the right infrastructure you cannot operate and uh, finally we also looked at the at the management of the training centers so these uh, three these four issues uh, determined whether you will become a, a level one trainer a category two or category three but as i said we started with re-registration we eliminated eliminated a lot of of uh, yeah. dubious uh, centers. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. Uh, do you have the basic requirement, educational requirement, mm. uh, we might call it academic, mm. for, for you to accept um, the students to a vocational training of vocational training center, which I assume the majority are private, mm. um, for them to accept a student so it was free for all? Um, yeah, I think going back to history, uh, vocational training was uh, brought into being as a savior for those who could not uh, uh, progress with their studies. Yes. But uh, with time, it improved. It become it be, we, we we became not a place for failures, but uh, we turned it as uh, to become a place where one can get uh, hands-on skills okay. and knowledge, of course. So. We, we received class seven levers as well as form four levers. But we had special programs for standard seven levers. We have programs for both standard seven and, and uh, form four levers. We have programs for form four levers only. And even for form six, we have other short programs for any, anybody from any background. What's the relationship between <coughs> you, because you, you said you mm. are a regulator, yeah. just as much as yeah. a regulator. Yeah. What's the relationship to NACTE and uh, VETA? Uh, one, we are all regulators. <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, um, I regulate the, the, the vocational system. Yes. And we had an agreement with NACTE. We developed the progression pathway whereby graduates from uh, VETA level three, they can progress to level four, five, and six. Which is under NACTE. Yes. Which is under NACTE. You can go all yeah. the way, you know. And the NACTE. sky is the limit. <laughs> 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 so that's the major relationship. When uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, VETA and NACTE uh, were the pioneers in the development of what we call national qualification framework. Mm -hmm which I'm not sure whether it's operational at the moment, probably the professor knows better, but for any country to do well in education, yes. there has to be a well-defined national qualification framework, which shows the relationship between different uh, uh, training levels, uh, progression pathways, yes. and also horizontal pathways. Uh, so we initiated our own uh, we call it TVET uh, progression pathway yeah, between we, Nectar and Vector. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not sure whether it's operational now. Uh, the, the one but between the Nectar and Vector is operational, but we we pushed for a national qualification framework. How far did your push go? Uh, well, there was a study conducted, and they even uh, the, the ministry appointed a group of committee to work on it. The, don't really yeah, the, the, that ratio. Things worked out, so there was a national issue yeah. on the national cultural framework. Yeah. Whether it is adopted, I think those who are in the system now can. can you confirm. you were in the system before. You're not in the system now, buddy. <laughs> but um, you have followed the discussion, the contribution from the three uh, panels here, the two professors and the engineer. Uh, whatever they have analyzed here boils down to the education system, and they say. Whatever we discuss about this VETA, NACTI, international institutions, we have to look them in a uh, holistic way, they use the word holistic, uh, in the context of education. W as a former director of education, I don't know, a couple of years back? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, two years, three years back. Four or five. Four or five. Four or five. Oh, <laughs> four or five is not a long time ago. <laughs> what would you say? I mean, is our education system really um, meeting the needs and the demands of the so many 
young men and women who some of them may not even go to university because of this question of passing exams uh, and failure. Failing doesn't mean that they are not intelligent, but uh, they can do better in better, they can do better in inactive tertiary institutions. So what do you like to say on to this? Thank you. Maybe I should start, or I should, yes, I should start with uh, my, my customers. My customers have been students. And you did well asking what is the implication to students yes. in this issue. Um, I, I think uh, I'm seeing in students who have been involved here okay. that there is a state of confusion. There is a state of shock. Uh, but in it, you may have some of the students who have appreciated what has happened who will have said uh, that, uh, so, shortcuts do not pay. Because maybe they have seen that the, 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 this which has happened was sort of foreseen because the qualifications for it, for that particular institution to run the, or to operate yes. as it was operating, maybe it was seen to be shaking even from the beginning. But um, you, you can see, and this is, I think is a, is, a, is a significant issue to be seen, that uh, our people, not only these kids, but our people in general, are desperate. They want education. And sometimes they think, this is where we get education. And they don't think twice how this education will be owned by themselves. They, 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 they are lured, they are, they are being attracted by the ads which are given by the provider of that education mm. and, and they go head on. Some of them, uh, they realize a bit too late that actually we, 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 are, we are in an institution which will not give us the best of what we wanted to have. Uh, some of them, it is known, that they, they, they move out from one institution to another mm -hmm. because they have realized that they can't get what they want from this institution and they go to another one. But as the professors have said, the issue is not what you want at that particular time, but what has been set out and agreed to, to bring about the good that you want to have for our nation. And our nation includes the youngsters, their parents, and everybody else. So I'll agree to start with. Uh, despite the confusion that might be in the air now for these young ones, yes. despite the sort of uh, shock, mm -hmm. but uh, there was good intention, and he has said it, yes. there was good intention to see that these institutions are giving what will be in the end beneficial mm -hmm. to their customers. But we need to, 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 to honor our customers. We, we need, the providers should see that the recipients are really getting the best out of it. And for that, yes, systems are needed. What I'm seeing today is we have, we have maybe this policy, maybe that plan, but we have not integrated, if I may say so, mm -hmm all the plans, all the policies, to fit in with what we are, we are, we are, we are currently facing. And I, I'm not saying that that is an easy job. It's certainly a mammothic job. Uh, it's big. But um, it has to be done. Maybe that's what the professor was saying, that something uh, to, like what Makweta did, the Makweta Commission or something, that will, will, will bring in everything, not only what, but even how and to what extent and uh, sort of say very, very clearly, like guidelines for everything that is, is, is supposed to be done in the name of education. I see. La, la, la. That's very interesting. I come back to you, Professor. <laughs> it, it, it seems the issue of our education system um, is it, paramount in whatever discussion we have we have had before, even now. Um, but in the past, 
people, I heard people say our education system is uh, poor, which means they were referring to the quality of our education. Do we really know what the problem is with our education, Professor? To, to even get to a stage where we should have another Makweta Commission to bring all the stakeholders. Do we know what the problem is? This is uh, just a small faction. The, the, answer, the answer is yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Yes, because you look at the developments that have taken place in science and technology over the last 34 years, and you look at the extent to which uh, the delivery of education in our own institutions at all levels has changed. It's a major change. Look at the role uh, that uh, information and computer technology is now playing yes. in delivery, starting from kindergarten all the way to university level. These are major ships, paradigm ships uh, by all the people who are involved. The students are affected, yes, but also the teachers at all levels, they are affected. So, pretending that there is no problem is really just a, a denial of some sort. So when I look at that, just as just one, one major factor, the development in S&T over the last 34 years yes. show that there's no way we can continue to run the education sector in the same way we are doing 34 years ago. And, and I was uh, 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 sharing a, a point with uh, Professor uh, Kitil and Kumbo, and I, I, and I really want to, to, to profess this, that uh, if we sleep, uh, our customers, uh, Philemon called them customers, our customers, the students, will not sleep. Because where we are heading in the future, the students are becoming very liberal, and the students will demand their rights. So if we continue with the current system whereby we are prescribing everything in universities, as we do in the prospectors, and we expect our students to comply to the rules quietly without any questions, mm. we, are, we are in for trouble. That, that time has gone, and it's it, long past. Isn't yeah, it? all I'm saying is that the future students will not accept to actually uh, obey the rules that line and the prospectors. They'll at, go to the course at, of course. At, at your time, when you were at the university. Yeah. Mm? yeah. Did you question the prospect? Never, never. It was not even expected that you can question. <laughs> but, but, but times have changed now. Times have changed. The yeah. students are much more aware about their rights and they see what's happening in other countries. Therefore, the universities and the ministry have to be aware that uh, sticking to the old rules uh, will not work in the future. Uh, you know, there are many examples that one can give. Uh, for example, for me personally, and I've discussed with many colleagues, the issue of whether the universities or the ministry should ban the use of mobile phones in schools is a very contentious issue. Is it? I know the ministry may be planning to ban this. It's a very contentious issue. The mobile phones will become a very important source of information for the future students. So Even, even the examination room? In the examination room, we have always banned. Okay. But uh, <laughs> in day-to-day -day life, yes. the day-to-day -day study yes. in the future will rely on mobile devices. So whether it's the right time now to start banning those mobile devices, or yeah, to postpone it, I'm saying the let the commission do its work. Let the commission ah, okay, come. Okay. They'll okay. do the, the their work. You're proposing yes, the yes, type. Yes. Huh? And then they will advise the government and, and the society whether it is wise to ban mobile devices. I'm not talking about mobile <laughs> mobile devices. You have tablets. You have uh, uh, readers, uh, book readers. So th these are these are very modern times. We, you can't afford to give <coughs> a casual treatment to such a decision. It's a very pre Crucial decision, and I was a little surprised when I saw in the news recently that the minister was nearly moving to actually declare that mobile phones are banned. I think it's not a simple matter. They should be banned on the road. To, to, to give, drive a, banned, to give a yeah. testimony yeah. on on what Professor said recently, that uh, in collaboration with the Airtel and the Costec, yes. uh, we Veta developed uh, jointly. They developed what we call. Uh, V SOMO. Uh, this is delivery of uh, training using mobile phones. The cost tech experts uh, designed uh, an application which can be used in, uh, in our mobile phones and a smartphone for, for anybody to get the information on a given program. For example, they started with a program on how to maintain a motorbike. Mm -hmm. yeah, if the, the, the motorbike chain comes out of the sprocket, the gears, 
they gave out uh, an outline on how to go about uh, putting it back. They also started another program on electrical, uh, how to ele uh, domestic electricity, how to do a domestic wiring. Mm -hmm. It's amazing on the number of young men using this facility. And young men. Ma men and women, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's amazing. It started hardly three months ago, but you look at the numbers, it's, it's now almost 150 plus. And every other day, the number keeps on increasing. People are happy using this facility to learn vocational training, to learn how to repair their motorbikes, to learn how to do minor electrical installations in the family, in the domestic uh, residential houses. It, it was unexpected. So we are now thinking of moving towards the ICT. direction ICT. It increases the enrollment. Uh, you reach more people. Cheaper. It's cheaper. Um, you, you use it uh, when you are, when you are in a dollar dollar, you, you can still study how to, how to repair. Despite the noise. Uh, despite the the noise. And it gives you an opportunity to sit for a test after, after finishing the lesson. And then there's also an opportunity to book a, a space in vocational training to go and do practicals. So amazingly, every young man and woman is, is running towards that. And the smartphone these days is part of it's, the Yeah, of course, they're very cheap, it's, yeah. It's, it's, Professor, uh, this is something very interesting you've just said. I'll, I'll come back to you. Can you, <coughs> you were vice chancellor of Open University for a long time. Um, only, only 10 years. <laughs> it's a decade, yeah. Um, probably you will share with Kitila and the other professors that it is being argued today that all these students who are coming out of uh, institutions of higher learning do not meet the requirements in the labor market. Now, what has gone on here? I mean, he referred to it as part of an act uh, decision to, to be more strict. W what is going on? Is this true? Because after, after your, in, your in, in, in introduction, I would like to quote something what uh, Comrade Mugabe said some few months back. Yes? Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, the, 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 the good thing is that uh, the, the government of Tanzania has been thinking very hard about this. And... Uh, I was uh, able to participate in some uh, background work, which was done by <coughs> the, the fourth government, to prepare uh, something that is called like National Skills Development Strategy. That, that program hopefully will be coming out from the government very soon. But it's a program that shows that uh, the products coming out of all education institutions in Tanzania, the, 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 the skills that the, 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 the graduates have, don't quite match what the industry wants them to have. So this is a real mismatch between what we are producing in the institutions and what the industry wants. And the government now wants to involve the private sector, as well as the government uh, funding, to bring about uh, an adjustment of the curricula in the different institutions. And this program is there now to address, it's not an issue of the quiet of the problem that they, that they are running, but that the skills that we are imparting on the graduates don't seem to make them ready for work immediately. So that mismatch is an element that is, is going to be worked, mm. to be addressed, mm. uh, so that the, the products that come from universities mm. can be found to be useful in the industry. Mm. And I, I really hope that work will come out very soon from the government, from the fifth phase government, because it is uh, wanted by the private sector. They, they said they are ready yesterday. They were ready yesterday to start working with the government so that the universities and the colleges can adjust the, the curriculum. And in the process. And, and our, our, our colleagues in the university somehow, they, we, we may deny sometimes when we produce this, this product, mm -hmm. but there is a big <coughs> problem. And when we, we, we had the, the opportunity to call the universities and colleges to ask them what is wrong with what you are teaching, they were unsure. So it requires the colleges and universities to work with the private sector to agree that this is the curriculum that we want. And we uh. ought to do it very quickly. You want to come in, Kitira, very quickly on that, and then I'll read what uh, Comrade Mugai, Mugabe says. We try to see with what you people say. You see, uh, uh, two, three issues. One, our, 
our problems with the education system are multiple, and it is not something that can be said very easily. It runs, you know, it begins with the fundamentals, the basics. The basics is that our education system is not designed to make learners learn. This is why, if you look around, you run around things which have nothing to do with learning. We talk about desks, now the language is desks. And all studies show there is no any relationship between the number of desks and students learning. Uh, is there no relationship with the, with the, with the students sitting on the floor studying? Yes. And, and It is not what makes learning happen, that is what we know. You can have all the nice buildings, the nice desks, even sitting in a nice place like this one, but learning does not, is not guaranteed to be happening there. And we know. So this government, this country, this society is very good at dealing with the simple things. Things that if you do, they look palatable. But we don't do with the software, software which is the, the most fundamental. So, so <laughs> I think the point the professor is making is very important that there is a need to revisit our education system much more comprehensively, much more systematically, so that we do a proper diagnosis. Because we cannot do a proper prescription without doing proper diagnosis. So, so we just touch bases. I will tell you, as we speak, we are talking about having a shortage of 50% shortage in classrooms. To be more precise, is 49%. This is government data. And only 25% shortage in the number of desks. But you see what the government is doing? It's very busy with the desks. Very soon, we are going to have a lot of desks. But where do you put them? No, no structures? Yeah, no, no classrooms, you know. This is the problem. As we speak this year, we have double intake. We have taken uh, uh, children with age six, because that is what the new policy says, mm -hmm. and children of age seven. seven. And the people think that the increase in enrollment is because of the, yes. uh, what do they call? New, what is this called? Free education policy, as if that is new. This country has been offering free primary education since 2002. It is not new. What is new is that this year we have had two or double enrollment, children aged six and those aged seven at the same time. This problem is going to repeat 2021. Because now by 2021, all kids graduating from standard six and seven, they will have to go, all of them, to secondary education. This is what our policy says. Yes. Then you are going to say, hey, we have, because of the good things we've done, we have triple enrollment in secondary education. No, this should have been seen five, six, ten years ago. So that is on basic education. All studies show that our kids are not learning. Basic skills, numeracy, literacy, reading, writing, counting. These are very basic, they are not there. Some, and then, of hake, hake, some of the hake limbo. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it was a research. research. And it was a research. This is what we know. I mean, even the government research, equipment, so many people have shown that. But what are we doing to address <coughs> these things? No, we are busy with other things. Increase the desks. We are going to be increasing the number of toilets. We are going to be increasing the number of uh, classrooms. Because these things are easy to do. You know, they're not difficult. But it's also proud. Oh, it is very important. Mm. It is extremely important. But if you do all these things nicely, that does not guarantee that learning is going to be taking place. On the final note, on the higher education, this is a crisis also. And it is not just a crisis in Tanzania, it is global. Because even in the US, employers are complaining of the Harvard graduates, if, as we speak. Mm. That Harvard is, you know, is, it well remains known. too traditional, you know, it's not pro it, it begins with the question, what is the role of a university? And what are the employers complaining of? They are complaining of not our graduates don't know physics or chemistry or geography or history. Our graduates are very poor in what? Communication. Yeah? And other personal attributes. Teamwork. How about thinking? Teamwork. Teamwork. You know, these things you don't, you don't get them in the university lecture hall. No. So these things start systematically. You know, from far away, you go slowly. And lastly, we have very less employers in this country. Because higher education. The role of universities is to educate. Training is supposed to be done by employers. For them, yeah. they are looking for ready-made products. Which is not possible. Which is why in many good countries, there is a very good link between universities 
and, and the industry. And the so that you show, the IBM is built very close to a university. If you go to Israel, University of Haifa mm. is just very close to IBM. That is, but here, what is happening in TBLO mm. and my friend's uh, College of Engineering, the Chemical and Processing Engineering, yes. far away. <laughs> so, so, the, so, so the employer should not <laughs> run away from the responsibility that they have a responsibility of training. Yes. The university core responsibility is education. Right. So these things have to be matched. The problem with yeah. chipping yeah. is, is are, we, are we making a person, are we creating, molding a person, a Tanzanian person, through our education system, who will be such a responsible person that we can depend upon, that we can expect from him or her to deliver? I, I'm seeing here the, the issue of mindset that we have not worked well or deep enough on setting the mind of our young ones, including the, the parents and everybody else, yes. so as to be such a person who will say, I will do this because I want to do it and I will try to be able to do it. We, we will go to, to a school, but what we want from a school or whatever institution that we are going into is a certificate. Certification, because with that little piece of paper, I'll be recognized. I'll be able maybe to get a white collar job or get a desk at least. Whatever I'm doing there is another issue. And, uh, and I'm seeing really, really that most of our people here, even the question of hard working is not with them. Mm. <laughs> a question of of of, of uh, a question of you 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 sending yourself committing yourself the commitment to do something and people to see that something has been done yes. is not there because we cannot learn everything in the school setting but if you have a mind which is sending you which is has been trained or has been conditioned so as to think that I can do something and therefore be accepted and therefore achieve and therefore have, help somebody. Not necessarily with, because of the certificate. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. If you have that mind, if you can, we can bring that mind to our people, then you have development. Then we have, have a long way. <coughs> what I mean, yeah. before we go to the last question, I, we have to see. I just I thought this was exciting. Uh -huh. Somebody sent it to me, the usual. Uh, communication on the smartphone. Mugabe said, how do you convince the upcoming generation that education is the key to success? Hmm? When we are surrounded by poor graduates and rich criminals. <laughs> it was a very unfortunate quote. I read it. Very unfortunate, of course. Right? But there he is. But there he is. Um, okay, in the next 15 minutes, let's see if we can um, address um, this last question. Um, uh, is there a demand for these tertiary institutions? Um, Professor Ketiro, do we really have a great demand for tertiary institutions? Huge demand, but we need to... Huge demand. Uh, the demand is very big, there is no doubt about that. But we must address additional issues. Because at the moment, uh, tertiary institutions, vocational and technical education, as, is seen as a place for people who are unable to proceed with further education. This is a huge attitudinal issue that we have to address. Kind of scale. That it would appear like everybody should be going to the university. Uh, to the extent to do that? To, yeah, to the extent that we are now converting almost every tertiary institution in this country to go. Uh, higher education, which I think is very wrong for a developing country like mm -hmm. ours. Mm -hmm. People should be free to choose after basic education. Mm -hmm. uh, after basic education, and in this country by basic education we mean Form 4, that is an official. Mm -hmm. After Form 4, people should be able to choose. I want to proceed, I want to now after Form 4 they should be able to decide where do I want to go. Do I want to go to the university right away, <coughs> or I want to go to begin with vocational education, begin with technical education, get some specific skills, mm -hmm. do some work before I proceed. Our education system is not providing that. For us, our education system is actually spontaneous, in a way that, uh, okay, natural actually, that after Form 4, if I have failed, then I start looking for, uh, where is the vocational college? Where is the technical college? 
Where is the teacher's college? <coughs> you know? so, so this is the problem. So the biggest problem is attitudinal. Mindset. So, mindset. <coughs> and this should begin from the college, should begin from how we orient our, our children. It should begin from career, uh, choice okay, and counseling programs. So that, you know, people should not, be, should not be compelled that you are only seen to be important if you have a degree, because this is the problem we have. The more the degrees you acquire, the more important you are seen by the society. So, the, so and and the, the more important you feel, you yeah, are important. Yeah, yeah. So, so my summary of that is that, yes, the, the demand is there, but I think there is a problem with the attitude. And then I wanted to, to, to make Quick, this quickly, comment. So that we Very can quickly. Go the st step number one to improve education begins by making the cost of mediocrity costly. My, the problem we have in this, <laughs> in this country is that there is, there is almost no consequence of being ignorant. There is very small consequences of doing mistakes. You can do a big mistake and you can survive. So mediocrity is celebrated. Number one step to addressing education problems is to ensure that mediocrity is not tolerated at all, at all levels. At, and at all costs. At all costs. That, that is very important. All right. Well, let, let's, oh my God, we have five minutes. Let, let's go around this way very quickly. Uh, so what mm -hmm. are the challenges uh, in this sector, the fashion institutions, vocational training? Very quickly, uh, let's say one minute. Challenges? challenges. So, oh, challenge. Well, well I'll, I'll go back to what I said, Dylan, and uh, good enough, Professor, I've also said, <coughs> attitude, no? Are we, are we training the mind? to be independent and to do good and big things, and for who, for the nation? Are we just running after certification, even if we are buying it one way or another? Are we, are we, are we as a nation, are we bringing the things together, having good plans, which we can do and be proud of? I think we are trying, but we need to coordinate better. Yeah. Get rid of mediocrity. Professor, Thank you very much. Few uh, for me, I think uh, three issues are, are very important. Uh, the, the need for mindset change by both the, the students and the lecturers. We, we are all older people, some young ones are coming, but both the students and lecturers have to change the mindset that uh, their attitude should be job creation, not necessarily employment, because the employment uh, factor is stuck in the heads of our graduates. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think uh, the, the fact that education is for safe development ha ha has to be stressed. If it happens to lead you to uh, employment, it should be an accident, not the first priority that it is now. <laughs> <laughs> for me, the, the demand for both the vocational and tertiary institu institutions is very high. In fact, the vocational is only meeting about 20% of the demand at the moment. So the government should uh, encourage private uh, sector to, to come into constructing and establishing these training centers. But quality assurance for, is fundamental. So just one comment, which is that let us mainstream vocational and technical education to become part of proper formal education in this country. At the moment, this is, this is pretty much still informal. And I think that we need to make it a uh, formal part of the education system. Mm. And lastly, we have to keep on repeating the need for a comprehensive review of our education system. That's we critical. can't address our education system in piecemeal. Mm. We have to revisit comprehensively so that we mm. organize mm. and prescribe mm. properly and adequately. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, my panelists. We need to revisit our education system mm. and address it comprehensively. As Professor Mbueta said at the beginning, we need to have a, 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 another Makweta Commission all along and we need to, to instill into our young men that, you know, education is not the is not a priority or self-employment probably is the uh, rather than the so young uh, men and women young men and women <laughs> and of course uh, we need to have mm. you know look at at the vocational training as well as the uh, touch of institutions so thank you very much i'm sure my my viewers have really benefited today a great deal from you <laughs> viewers you've heard the views of my panelists here was the the registration of the the five colleges by NACTE was a surprise. The very fact that these and the other institutions continue to operate with the poor standards 
less qualified teaching staff, expired accreditation, even colleges or schools within established institution of higher learning for a long time. That certainly uh, leaves much to be desired, but we've heard from Professor Mkumbo, the board member of NACTE, that this has been going on since 2013. If NACTE decision is the beginning of reading the country of bogus schools and colleges whose owners merely want to make money, as we've heard from the panelists here, has to be commended. And it should obviously be taken as a step in the right direction in order to improve the overall quality of our education system, which has been hammered very well by all my four panelists here. Let us hope that the affected students will be rescued by NACTE, as you heard from Professor Mkumbo, so that they can continue with their studies elsewhere if they qualify. And those who don't qualify, it is the responsibility of the relevant colleges which have been registered to take care of, of these students for issues like paying, paying their fees back and whatever <coughs> steps they want to take. This is all we have for you today. Until next Sunday at 21 hours and on Thursday at 15 hours for the repeat program. On behalf of my panel, Professor Kitila Mkumbo, Engineer Moshi, Mwalimu uh, Charles uh, Philemon Mabonda, Professor Tolembuete, and my TBC Television Center crew. Thank you viewers and goodbye. Goodbye.